21. The temperature of the cooling water as it leaves the hot engine of an automobile is 240 degrees Fahrenheit. After it passes through the radiator, it has a temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Calculate the amount of heat transferred from the engine to the surroundings by one gallon of water with a specific heat of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so they gave us a specific heat, right? They gave us different temperatures. They're asking for the amount of heat transferred. So we're definitely looking at this formula right here, right? Q equals MS delta T. Now the only compound that they told us was water. So we're not mixing water with a metal or anything like that. So we go back to the standard Q equals MS delta T formula. Now they told us that you know, the water had a specific heat to 4.184, so that's the S, right? S is specific heat, 4.184, and that's joules per gram degree Celsius. Now, if the specific heat is in degree Celsius, that means that the temps that I use when I do my delta T also have to be in degree Celsius. But uh-oh, they gave me 240 degrees Fahrenheit. They gave me 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first thing we have to do is we have to convert what those are into Celsius. And I put the formula right here for you guys, okay? So we got 240 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, right? So let's just figure out what that is. I'm just going to plug the 240 into here, minus 32, and then take that number and divide by 1.8. So let's see. We got 240 Fahrenheit, minus 32 divided by 1.8, I get roughly 115.56 degrees Celsius. And now let's do the same for the 175. So I have 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, I don't know why I keep putting Celsius. I guess it's just a habit, right? Let's see what that is in Celsius. So same formula, 175 minus 32 divided by 1.8, I get 79 point, we'll say four, four. Okay. Now it says the temperature of the cooling water as it leaves was the 240. After it passes through the radiator, it dropped down. So this temperature 175 was after the 240. So it makes sense that the 175 was the final temp. This is TF and the 240 was the initial temp. So that's TI. Now I can just, you know, figure out what a delta T is, right? Delta T, if I just write it over here, remember it's final temp minus initial temp. So final now I'm going to take is 79.44 and subtract it from the 115.56. Okay. And then I'll just put that over here. Delta T equals whatever that number is. So maybe I'll just put it over there, just so I have a little bit more room. So 79.44 minus 115.56. I get a delta T, which is negative. That always means that we're dropping in temp. And we're dropping by 36.12 degrees Celsius. Perfect. Now I'm coming over to the M, which stands for mass. They told us that we had one gallon of water. That's a volume, right? But when I use this formula, I need to have this in grams. That's the standard unit for Q equals MS delta T. So I just gave a quick little conversion down here. I said that one gallon is equal to 3,785.41 milliliters, right? And since this is water, right, how are we going to go from mils to grams? Oh, well, technically we would use the density formula. But for water, it's one gram per mil. So whatever the milliliter is, that's the amount of grams as well. So that was the catch here, guys. So this was really 3,785.41 grams as well. And that's going over here. 3,785.41 grams. And now we're ready to just calculate the heat, which is Q. So. I'll do it over here. Q equals 3785.41, right? 
times 4.184. When I pl start plugging in all my numbers, I don't plug in the units because I know that I have all the correct units. I don't like to get confused. And now let's find out that Q. So let's see. 3785.41 times 4.184 times negative 36.12. And we get, ooh, a big number. Okay. So this would probably be better off in kilojoules. Now remember, the uh, Q, if you plug it into the calculator, it's always going to be in joules first. So I have a negative, what is this, 572,074 joules. Remember, if you want to convert into kilojoules, all you have to do is just divide by 1,000. Okay, so just memorize that quick little conversion, okay? Joules to kilojoules divided by 1,000. So I could say that this is a negative 572 kilojoules. So if we wanted to put this into correct sig figs, because I see that I have two sig figs up here, this would just either be a negative 570 kilojoules, or you could either say negative 5.7 times 10 to the second, but let's just, actually, ooh, let's just, let's just get rid of this two, and we will put a zero. Okay, now, the question did ask, and this is kilojoules, right? Now, the question did ask how much heat was transferred. The negative over here just signifies that in this case, the energy was lost. Heat was lost here. But remember, it's just going to be transferred. So the actual amount isn't going to include the negative number. The negative is just telling you that in this case, it was lost. But the transferred amount is a positive amount. It's kind of just like, you know, talking about it instead of looking at negatives and positives. So how much heat was transferred? 570 kilojoules. And then that should answer the question. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for, you know, viewing the video. I really hope this is helping you. Subscribe to the channel if you want, and I'll see you in future lessons. Bye-bye.